Welcome to the Artist Academy podcast. I'm your host, Andrea Earhart, and I am so excited that you're here to catch the weekly replay of my laid-back yet very inspiring conversations with other full-time professional artists. The purpose of this series is to show aspiring artists that it is completely possible to have a great career in the arts. And if you ever want to tune in and have your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just check out the schedule over at facebook.com slash groups slash Artist Academy every Tuesday to catch us on live. I'll see you there. This episode is sponsored by the Mural Master Program inside of the Artist Academy Advanced Membership. This program is specifically designed to help you with every step of the mural process. From coming up with an idea, to finding a wall to paint it on, to pitching your ideas to businesses, and finally, of course, I teach you exactly how to paint large scale. Murals are a lot of fun and a great way to grow your art business. I know because it has been one of the top ways that I've been able to grow my own art business as quickly as I have. With several years of experience as a muralist, I've dialed down the painting techniques, the proposals, the pitching, the whole bit. And now I've compiled it into one resource for you called the Mural Master Program. This is included inside of the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, and I would love to invite you to join us by going to artistacademy.co, that is artistacademy.co, and click the link to see the Mural Master Program and learn more. And that's it, so let's get on with the show. This week's episode features Wisconsin-based muralist Sarah Pedersen. Since this is Mural Month, I had to reach out to one of my favorite artists to follow on Facebook. Her murals pop up on my feed every single week, and every time I see one, I think, wow, she spent some time on that. (laughs) Sarah's murals are so well thought out and so detail-oriented, and it really shows in her final product. In this interview, we talk about her process and what goes on behind the scenes before she even starts painting, (laughs) the details she puts into her customer-to-client interaction, which flows into her painting process, is going to shock you. (laughs) I know this because it shocked me. Sarah does all the little things from documenting her progress, steps 1 to 100, (laughs) to making sure every little detail of the painting is exactly how it's supposed to be. If you're someone who is detail-oriented, this is an interview for you. (laughs) Along with giving great insight, Sarah is also really encouraging to aspiring muralists and gives a lot of great tips on how to get started in this industry. So let me know what you think about this week's episode with Sarah Pedersen. So if you could just start out a little bit by introducing yourself and telling a little bit about who you are and what you do for anybody who is not, not familiar quite yet. Sure. Well, my name is Sarah Peterson. I am based out of Wisconsin. So I live in a really little small town outside of La Crosse. Uh, I basically, my work is mural based. I paint murals. It's basically 100% commission based at this point. It's changed throughout the years, but that is my primary thing right now. I really love painting trompe l'oeil murals, um, murals that fool people's eyes. Um, I guess to start back, when I was younger, I loved to draw. I did not like to paint at all. So um, I always took art classes throughout all of elementary school, high school. And when it got to be when I was going to go to college, back that was early 90s. There was no such thing as Internet, really. So we didn't have a lot of options to see what you could do as an artist other than being a teacher. And I was incredibly shy. (laughs) and could not dream of standing in front of students to teach and talk to them about anything. So um, I thought, well, maybe I could do advertising or something. I wasn't really sure. In my career, I've worked for a couple of different television stations. I've worked for a hospital. I've worked for a staffing firm. So I've got a lot of variety of corporate experience, but I didn't really enjoy the office type setting. Um, I'd always navigate toward 
can I design your newsletter? <laughs> and that'd be the highlight of my week when I could do something creative because I was really, you know, I'm, I'm very detail oriented. I love to be organized. Um, I'm quite a perfectionist. So the administrative type things I was really good at, but I didn't really enjoy it. <laughs> so, um, and meanwhile, also throughout the years, the art that I would do would be like I'd buy a stencil and I'd stencil on my walls. But I thought stencils were kind of boring, so I'd make my own twist on it where I'd add different highlights or shadows or I didn't like the certain flower that was there, so I'd paint my own flowers. Um, and every time I'd do that, people would say, you should do that for a living, and I just blew it off because there's how could I do that for a living? Who would want that in their house? So... I'm just kind of scatterbrained at the moment. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I get the same way. I'm like, what was I just saying? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, I guess when I set up my business plan, I wanted to make sure that my focus was on what clients wanted because I have a lot of crazy, weird ideas, and I didn't know how that how I could sell that or do that. So that's been the primary focus for my business. And I love it when someone has even just a general idea, like, I really like trees and I like birch trees, then I can come up with a really unique design for them so they don't have the same mural that every other person has. Um, so that's kind of yeah, the background. Of, sure. um, I was a stay-at-home mom for many years. Um, we, Our son was born in Oregon. We lived in Nebraska and Oregon, so we've traveled a lot throughout the United States. And when our son was born, all our family is back here in Wisconsin, so we decided to move back here to be closer to family. And so that was kind of, once I was able to stay home with him, then I knew I did not want to go back into an office setting. So um, I did use the walls in our home to practice more just to, this is kind of silly, but we had a purple bathroom and it was really purple, but I didn't want to repaint the whole thing because there are so many nooks and crannies so I thought well I'll just paint curtains around the window and that'll break up all the purple so that kind of that's the kind of things I did and I painted shadows around them with cute little flowers I don't know but just random things that I liked to do and again more people would say you should do that and it kind of got a bug in my ear so and by then too internet was I was older the internet was around and I could start seeing chat rooms online this is kind of before Facebook was a thing but I'd find chat rooms and threads of these decorative painters and artists who did this for a living and I would just spent hours reading through all of their experiences and realizing I could maybe do this for a living <laughs> Yeah, there there are so. many people out there who can paint and find customers yeah. and do this for a living. What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, um. yeah, and I, I love that you said you paint your bathroom. You painted your bathroom first because the, the, my bathroom was my third first mural as well. It was like a... Okay. Like, we do an under the sea theme, duh. Because <laughs> nice. it's your bathroom. <laughs> yeah, typical, typical bathroom. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so you've been doing this for ten years because you mentioned like chat rooms. Yeah, well, I've I've I've, I've been doing it officially for eight years. Wow. So before I made the jump to actually do it. Um, I did a lot of research. It, so I'm going to step back a little bit. I, I planned to be a stay-at-home mom for quite a while. Uh, our son was getting to be elementary school, and we really wanted to have another baby. So I did get pregnant, and we had another baby, but she was born early. And so she did not survive. So that really, I it kind of moved my timeline up a lot, and it, it wrecked my life for a very for a, a solid year where I was in a fog. Um, yeah. after, after that happened, so many things changed emotionally and my view of the world. And it just changed a lot of things for me. It was a very, very major life experience. And since my son was getting older and I knew I wouldn't, we wouldn't have any more children after that, we... I don't even need to bring you down. I mean, it's just, it's a, no. it's a life experience that, um, I realized 
I needed to do something that I enjoyed. And over the course of doing this too, I found like the murals that I paint for people that have lost other people. Like if it's a memorial mural or a canvas or it brings someone joy or brings them to tears, that is the, that's the most meaningful projects to me when that happens. Um, losing Alexa, basically it meant I, I could focus. I found another focus on something and I still, our son and we have a step, I have a stepdaughter too, and I'm a grandma now, (laughs) but family is super, super important to me. So not only did I want to be um, self-employed, but I wanted to make sure that I could work around our son's schedule so we could go to his field trip. So I could go to all of his concert and never miss any of these important events. So that was another really important factor. And when I was setting up um, how my business would work. Um, yeah. Wow. What, that's such a turning point too, but it's, it's awesome that now you can, you know, do something you love and that it's, it, you know, it, it brings out some more, some meaning into it. Mm-hmm. And well and like you can connect with those customers on a deeper level Um, absolutely yeah wow well (laughs) and I don't I know you know I don't go into clients houses and say this happened to me I mean a lot of them probably don't even have any idea that this happened but it it gives me a really good perspective and I'm an emotional person so I can I, I really try to dig into what they want on their walls because with these clients, they, they can't paint. Most of them, they don't know how to do it and they want someone to do it. And if you really mesh out with them what they're looking for and um, it is the greatest feeling when they're so happy, they start crying at the end because it's better than what they had hoped for. I mean, that's the best feeling. And I didn't, going into it, I didn't think I'd ever, like that wasn't a goal of mine. I just thought I'm just going to go paint and I'm going to make money and have fun and but it's morphed into that where I get those clients and those job, those projects where it really affects people emotionally. That's, those are my favorite projects when that happens. Yeah. I bet. And art is therapy, you know, like yeah, so, creating and getting lost in it. Uh, it really, mm-hmm. I think it does heal the mind and it just like lets you, you know, focus on something else all while, you know, you know, mm-hmm using up your creativity on something and yeah <laughs> absolutely <laughs> um, yeah my friend I one of my good friends just did a portrait for it was of a newborn baby and a grandfather that had passed and they had okay. never met and so mm-hmm. they wanted a, a portrait of them together and so I thought that was really meaningful yeah that is really neat how artists can do that for people because there's no other way you know for them to do that so yeah. Yeah, that's wonderful. Yeah. So, how many years did it take you to go from like uh, small jobs on the side uh, to like busy muralist? Um, it took me quite a while because honestly, I wasn't go 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 after it marketing really hard in the beginning because I still was dealing with Alexa's loss. I was still with Ethan was first second grade. So, um, and it. My husband has, he just had, we have a regular income. So we were living just off of his income this whole time, making it work, have a super small house. So I didn't have to push it. I also didn't want to stress myself out. Um, so the, the, luckily the first year due to networking, I'm a, I was on the local park board here. One of the park board members were, was in the accounting for a local newspaper and she had seen what I had done and because to start off the, my, I to make sure I could do an actual real mural, I painted one in my hallway, like a, a landscape mural. <laughs> As I was deciding, I'm going to do this for people. I should probably make sure I can actually do it. So she had seen that, and she's like, I know just the person at the newspaper who I should connect you with. So I met with this woman, and she ran a beautiful article for me on Easter Sunday on the front page of the Home and Garden section. Oh. So I got five jobs from that article alone, and they're all big jobs. And almost every single one of those jobs led to repeat business and word of mouth. Um, but so, yeah, the early, the early few years, I could go a month between jobs. Um, I didn't pay to advertise. I didn't want to go into debt for this business at all. I, I did make brochures and hand them out and just tried to get started on social media and 
so yeah, it, it took a while until I started to get to more of the commercial jobs. I, there was a time probably three years ago when business was pretty slow and in chatting with my dentist, he's like, how's it going? I said, well, it's pretty slow, honestly. He's like, well, I've been wanting you to paint something in my house. So maybe it, at some point, you know, you can come over. I was like, well, how about tomorrow? <laughs> so I got, to, I painted in his house and then my dental hygienist put a bug in his ear, you know, since we're moving locations, Sarah could paint a tooth fairy mural in our lobby. And so that helped too. So he had me paint there. So, and like even that job alone, it, it, it has all glass on one side and it share, he shares an office with another dentist. So people from both dentist office come and grab brochures and I've gotten several jobs just from that alone. So yeah, word of mouth and repeat business has been wonderful as far as once you start getting the bigger jobs, it kind of, it's exploded for me. And then the more you paint, the better you get at it and the faster you get at it too, at least for me. So, so that's helped. I've been consistently busy for about three years now and um, almost too busy sometimes because there's so much that is not just going to paint and come home and just sit on the couch. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot of work. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this, this job is it's really feast or famine, too. It's like you're like kind of barely getting by or you're just like slammed and then it, yes. it kind of like flows in and out, too. So mm -hmm. I have there are two uh, points that you mentioned that I want to touch on. Um, yeah. One being the brochure. So you leave a brochure at the dentist's office. Yes. And like for them, they actually let me have a little stand where I can leave several of them. And I see them every six months, so I can always replenish it. And, and they'll call me when they say, we're running low on brochures. I mean, those are the kind of clients which you can't thank enough for that. And I, so I've gotten people will say, I picked up your brochure at Dr. Sedlock's office. So I mean, it's wonderful. And I, you know, I do, being the creative, I, I, I create my own brochures too. So I do all of everything. So it's fun to pick and choose which which pieces of artwork should I put in my brochure to gather the right audience. And and now I have enough experience where I can put the pieces in there that represent what I want to do. Because early on I did I just kinda had to show what, what I've done, but now I can say, yeah, I don't really enjoy painting that kind of thing. So now I'm gonna focus on these and get more of those clients that want what I like. <laughs> I don't let them know what I like. <laughs> Because I don't want to turn down any jobs, so. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I love that, that, too. Okay, so what, so what kind of stuff do you put in the brochure? What, what, what do you want to do more of? Like, because I'm um, trying, I'm, I, and I think most artists in here, like, well, like, we have business cards, you know, but, like, a brochure is a whole nother level of a business card. And I think I absolutely years ago and I just never did it and so I love that we're bringing it back up because that because you know art as you know like it's like our art is us and that's the thing mm -hmm. that will wow people not really words on a card like every other business person has you know mm -hmm. so what if we had a brochure and we left it at all the places okay okay what's it yeah doing? absolutely right because um when I tell people I'm an artist, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. Like, that yeah. has no meaning to them other than you're an artist. But when I say, no, me. look, okay. here's my brochure. And on the cover, I've got one where the I have the keyboard coming out. Looks like it's coming out into the room with the shadow under it. So people are like, no, wait, that's painted on a flat wall? So it instantly grabs their attention. And then I had a really um, big job for the in our local hospital in their pediatric oncology department so I've had several murals throughout that department and so there's a lot of clout with that too I just feel super proud that I was able to get into the hospital so I've got some photos of there like a life-size blue heron and I did also a height a height wall where I've got basically the the measurement is on a a stump a, basically a, a large tree stump and so there's animals peeking around around it so there's a raccoon here and a woodpecker here and a squirrel here so the kids go and they can see how tall am I this time compared to where the animal is so like I have a photo where I'm measuring myself at the selfie so that people can see the size of it and see that I'm not all totally serious and have a little bit of a fun side to me and so yeah I love the trompe l'oeil trompe l'oeil working 
shadows, making flat spaces look three dimensional. That's, I love doing that. And I love nature too. So anything related to bugs, birds, butterflies, plants, I love all those kind of things too. So those are my favorite. But yeah, it's just a three, three part brochure and I, I kind of know which ones I've got the most feedback on Facebook and in person. So I kind of try to include those because I know they're well received by a lot of people too. Okay. Do you put your pricing on your brochure? I don't put my pricing anywhere (laughs) because (laughs) I, I, I price by project. So it's, it's kind of a complicated process. Um, I do before my consults, I send out an email with a PDF that does list how I price, which is time materials, um, all the extraneous factors that could come into play. If it's really bumpy surface, if I have to use my scaffold, if I have to travel an hour away and I, I do have, let them know like minimum costs so that they know right away that if, if this is above their minute, if they can't even afford the minimum, then I don't need to take my time. Of their time. They don't need to take my time. And I do, regarding pricing, the last few years, I actually discuss budget before I even um, do any sketches or designs uh, because it's a, such a waste of time if I'm designing for a $4,000 mural and they only have $2,000. So we have that discussion early on. What are you comfortable spending? And if they're not at cover for any very much, then I have to they do a very simple mural for them and realize they can't get this Cadillac that you see over here because you're paying for this little, I don't know, <laughs> this little <laughs> bike. So, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and I, I love that, that strategy as well. I'm like, I can make a mural to fit in any budget. It's just up to you just how much detail you want put in it. And, like, we can mm-hmm. always create a cool one, you know. It, it'll be cool, like, low detail and fun but if you want it to be like wow factor then that'll just take a little bit more and yeah you Mm -hmm. spend uh, how much time do you usually spend so like on a wow mural like say um the one you just did for a library or was that yeah that was for working on yeah i just finished that one (laughs) that one is one of my biggest exterior ones i've done but it was tons of detail (laughs) i don't know how many i don't know off the top of my head how many books i painted but there's between 30 or so of between books and characters. So that one, it's all books in the public domain. And they gave me a list of books that they, that they wanted me to use, but it was a very extensive list. So we had to go through. So a lot of this stuff happens before the mural painting begins. I had to, they, they gave me certain books they wanted and then others, they just said, pick and choose. Okay. <laughs> So I have the I had the basic layout design that they wanted, but then I had to look at all the original book covers and the characters. So Velveteen Rabbit, Peter Rabbit, it was I was for sure going to use those illustrations. Um, I'm a pretty intense painter. I take very few breaks. Like I'll take every couple hours and I'll eat real quick and then just keep painting. So I can't take big lunches or then I lose all my motivation. I'd rather just go home after that. <laughs> I also have other projects in varying stages. So I may have to be working on an estimate for somebody. I may have to be finalizing some sketches for another client that wanted revisions. I may have to do new sketches for a brand new client. And it it can be tough because at the end of the day, I've creatively used up all of my brain. (laughs) And so I'm not in the right space to be working on sketches for somebody. So I can't really do sketches every day because I really need to be in that right place in my mind. So that kind of complicates things and pushes the schedule out, but I'm booked plenty far ahead where it's people are aware that it'll take me some time to get through the sketches. So, and yeah, and then I still have to do with social media. I still have to make sure I have enough supplies for the jobs I have to prepare for upcoming jobs because there's so much work before it begins. I think that's what we were talking about before, just getting all the background information for the murals that I'm painting. So like for the one with all the books, I had to do a lot of research to find the original illustrations and figure out how to piece them together. And, you know, there are only so many places you can find these things and make sure they're not in the, or make sure they're in the public domain and 
then finding them to get the right size and the good clarity so I can make it look exactly how it looks in a small book, but like several feet larger. So, so yeah, it's, it's busy days and I still want to have time with family and I still want to play video games and, and watch TV. So <laughs> it never ends. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, it, it is. There are so many things it's like social media with sketch. Do you enjoy sketches? I do. That's actually kind of my favorite part is coming really? up with the design. <laughs> I know. Um, and I, I do everything to scale. So when I go to see the walls, I, uh, for a long time, I would draw the wall exactly to scale, do my sketches by pencil. Um, I finally was able to afford to upgrade to an iPad Pro this last winter, and now I use Procreate. So sometimes I may, may still draw the wall to scale, but I would then scan it and do everything else digitally at that point. And it has been such a time saver to for revision process <laughs> to be able to do it digitally, because then if I need to move elements around, I just move a layer as opposed to making a copy and erasing this and it doesn't erase all the way with a pencil. So anyway, I still like, I like to do a lot of sketches in black and white because clients can get um, distracted by the color. If they really don't like the color of something, they don't tend to look at the design. They focus on that color that they don't like. And the color is never going to match on the mural than what I give them, whether it's on their phone or their computer or in person. So um I don't know, but being being able to do the designs digitally has been wonderful, yes, <laughs> for sure. I, I totally agree. I purchased uh, an iPad about a year ago, and I'm just like, man, Procreate, it's like, it's so <laughs> easy. Like, you it is. Erase the layers, too, and mm -hmm. just <laughs> copy and paste, and just, uh, it's, it's fantastic. <laughs> it is such a game changer. I'm just so glad I finally made that upgrade. And then someday, too, in the future, if I want to start diversifying, I can actually just start doing digital artwork, too, as a side show and sell prints or whatever so yeah I, I need to just send my ideas to you because I hate <laughs> I hate the okay. part I'm like I try to do it as quickly as possible I'm like okay this okay. is okay, this is a general idea of what it looks like now now just let me paint <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm so backwards I spend so much time in that first stage um but it's fun I mean I will do little thumbnails in a sketch pad till I get a couple basic ideas because I like to give clients two ideas so that they can kind of pick and choose which they like. Um, unless I come up with one that I just personally think is the best I could probably come up with, then I'll just give them that. And then we go from there for what revisions they want at that point. So it's a fun process to, to do that. And I'm at the stage now I've done that. I've done this enough so that I can, in the beginning, I'd be hesitant to sketch certain things because I wasn't sure if I could paint them. <laughs> But wow. now I'm like, well, I'm just, I really like this idea. So I'm just going to sketch it and then I'll have to figure out how to paint it. So it's, that's a fun challenge too. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like that. Having the, uh, the confidence in yourself now to be like, I'll just, I'll just figure it out. Yeah. Uh, so how many, do, so um, do you go back and forth with as many revisions as they want? Is that all included in your total price? Um, well, I have an actual sketch consult, like a fee for sketches. And for that, for that fee, I do the initial sketches, two, maybe one or two, and then I offer two free revisions for that. So it, um, after that, if they want more revisions or want to start over, it's, a, it's like it, I charge an additional fee to keep doing more at that point. And I've never, I've never had anyone go beyond those two, those two revisions. I think it helps for them to know this is your chance to get it right. So let me know exactly what you want. Cause I'm not going to spend hours and hours and hours because in the beginning I would, <laughs> you know, I've had experiences where I learned the hard way, like, no, I need to make sure I charge after a certain point because I need to spend time painting. <laughs> not so much in the beginning. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So. So, do you let them know just like through, through chatting or through email um like the sketches thing or do you have like a sheet that you send them or how does that work yeah i have a sheet that i send them before before the, even the initial visit so that they know exactly what my sketch fee is or at least where it starts because i have a, a base a base price but then it can go up depending on if it's a really really large scale job that's going to be very detailed um, but I, I lay out all of that process for them and hopefully they read it. <laughs> if not, I bring it with me also to the consult to say, in case you didn't read it, here's my process for you. 
And then after each visit, I also send a formal estimate. And in there, it reiterates again, you, the sketch fee is this, this is how many revisions you get. It's applied toward the total amount of the contract when we sign the commission agreement. I'm very, I send a lot of information to these people. So I hope they're not overwhelmed with it, but a lot of people think my estimate is my contract. <laughs> so <laughs> because it's a full page and I go into a lot of detail about what I'll, what we talked about. And there was one time where I didn't send the formal estimate. And that's the one time where we had, in, I, I like to do that because it, it reiterates what we discussed. So I don't forget anything because especially if I get busy, I can't always, I maybe didn't write down everything exactly, but that's, they can look right away and say, Oh no, you said you would do this too. So the one time I didn't do an estimate, it was like, well, you said you'd also paint this huge lettering. Like I certainly don't remember that. I didn't make notes of it, but so I had to do it because I didn't have any paper trail of it. So I like to keep everything on the down low, I guess, just so I don't forget it. And so that everyone's happy in the end. Yeah. And that's a great way to look at it too. It's like, Hey, we're just documenting the process and that way you can Mm -hmm. look back on it in the end because I am the worst about sending (laughs) contracts and really anything. Cause I have this like, I have this like Midwest mentality where like, Oh, a handshake is a, is a thing. Yeah. Contract. (laughs) And I just, I know I need to stop doing that. And sometimes it bites me in the butt so much to where I actually just recently made like a sheet that has like, uh, common Q and A's for how I do business and um, the sketches thing is just on it. And I just made that like uh, <laughs> not two weeks ago. So I'm so excited to hear okay. that you already have one. <laughs> yeah, it has been so wonderful. And actually I've had clients, you know, let me know that they're super happy that I sent that to them. So, and they a lot of comments like that's so professional that you sent that to me and now I know what to expect because a lot of people haven't ever worked with an artist before. And so it, I think it helps erase their any fears or any nervousness they might have if they know when I come there, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to measure your walls. You can look at my portfolio. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to look at the texture on the wall. Is it water-based? All, all these different things so that they, because I, I'm a nervous kind of person. I always used to be nervous meeting people. Not now. <laughs> this job has taken that away. But I know other people are, so I want to help make them comfortable and excited about it, too. Yeah, so. I, I love that you're so thorough. I, I'm sure that takes <laughs> so much headaches in the end. <laughs> and I probably put too much time into things, and that's, no. that, but that's just the way I am. So. <laughs> I, I love it. And th- that seems very opposite of what normal artists are because I I hear I hear a lot from clients really about people who are like yeah this artist like didn't show up for this or like they Uh just forgot this and so I feel like the the standard with artists it's like we're very like wishy-washy and we're just we're so creative we can't we can't control (laughs) this and so I'm really glad to hear you talk about how you are so very yeah in control of everything I think that's Mm -hmm. a really great example to anybody out there who's like should I even have a contract Yes, you should. <laughs> yes, <laughs> without a doubt. <laughs> I mean, and I totally trust that I could shake someone's hand, but at the end of the project, if they say, well, I thought you were going to paint a robin, and I can point to the contract and say, no, it says a blue jay. <laughs> and you agreed <laughs> to it. You signed it right here. So if you want me to add another robin, you can pay me X amount of dollars, and I'll love to add a robin for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what, what I mean. what I- I'm like, I would love to do this, even though I'm like cursing in my head. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. so I'm like, okay, I would love yeah. to do this for you. And like in, in my email, I'm like, sure, that'll be X amount. No problem. That'll just take me a day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. So is there anything you don't like to paint without? Okay. I thought about that question. Um, and I have to have food <laughs> because <laughs> yeah. I get hangry. <laughs> so... <laughs> I need food, like, yeah, so every few hours, and I'm from Wisconsin, so it always has to be some kind of cheese at some point that I have to have, oh, I don't no. know, <laughs> but like spicy hot V8 with a smoke string cheese is awesome, great, so anyway, other than food, I have to have music, I love, like, the worst days are when I get to work and realize my MP3 player battery died, <laughs> and then I, because I don't, I don't have, da- I don't have unlimited data on my phone, so I can't just um, do that so that's really sad for me when I don't have music <laughs> and um, 
but I, it's, it's tough too when I'm in public settings where there's a lot of people because I don't want to be rude. So I always have at least one earbud in and I'll always leave one off. But if a lot of people are around, I just leave them off and just as long as there's stuff going on, I don't have to talk to myself in my head so much. So, but yeah, the, the last job, like when I was painting right next to a highway, it was really, really loud. So I had to put my music really, really loud, but then I thought well, I'm ruining my eardrums. So I don't know. There wasn't really a <laughs> It was a no-win kind of situation. So there were a lot of days where I didn't listen to my music. And at the end of those days, I just like, why was this day just kind of sucky? And it's because I wasn't listening to my music. So I just, I know that about myself. So and the other thing that I bring to every single job, I have, I have a briefcase basically that I take to all my consults. So I bring that to my jobs also. So it generally has my portfolio. It has um, brochures. So if anyone stops in, I can hand them brochures. I can hand them business cards. Always have a tape measure in case I need to measure something. And I have three folders in there. One is the client's folder that talks, that has everything I've ever discussed with them in there in case something comes up and they have a question about something that we discussed earlier. I have a folder that has all my reference photos. So I generally know what I'm going to paint that day. But if something gets wacky and I have to paint something else, I want to make sure I'm prepared for that. And then I have a folder that has my timeline and sketches. So For the sketches, I always have them printed out and with the grid actually drawn on them. And I have another sketch printed out that I use colored pencils, so I kind of know where the colors are going to go. And then I do a step-by-step. Here's my detail-oriented part. I do a step-by-step thing for every single mural. So I, in a document, I type out what I'm going to do so that when I get to the site, I don't have to figure anything out. I just go, go down my list. This, 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 this. And that way I also don't forget exactly how many things I'm going to pay, how many birds are going to be in there. And I can check them each one off. So then a client says, wait, were you going to also do this? I'm like, yeah, it's on my list down here. See? And on the big, big jobs, I don't look down that list too far because it's too stressful to see how much I have to go yet and how much time it could take. So I just focus on this, the little part I'm doing. And that helps me stay on schedule too, so that I don't fall behind and I just kind of know where I am with things. So wow. I know that's how I, that's how I, it's good. That's, you know, it takes a lot of time too when I'm not painting to type these things up, but it just makes it so much easier when I'm on site to do it. So. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You make me feel so under for <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm like, just trust me. I'll, I'll paint your <laughs> I can see I can't fly by the seat of my pants with this stuff I, I wish I could I love to just go and just start painting but I need a plan so and then that's what's worked for me anyway and I, it's awesome that you don't need that you can just do that I'm getting better like I'll still type it up but I don't there are days where I don't even look at it because I just know what I'm going to do now that I've done it more so that helps but especially in the early stage it was really helpful because then it helped me keep track too of, well, how long does it take to paint this tree? And I'd actually write down, started at 780, 752 and finished at whatever time. And so then I could keep track of that. And so now I have a really good feel for how long it'll take me to paint a bird and to paint this. So when I'm doing estimates, my estimate time goes a little faster because I can say, oh, that'll take me about three hours or that'll take me a day. So it has helped in the early stages for sure. And now it's just a like a security blanket, I guess. <laughs> a habit too. Yeah, you're you're in the yeah. habit of it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I didn't even think about that too. Like it helps you figure out how long it's going to take you because, I mean, at, after you do things so many times, you have a good guesstimate, but you have mm-hmm. a paper trail of like exactly. <laughs> and I'm sure you can yeah. see too like, with that how much faster you've gotten. Like it takes you. Five hours mm-hmm. to paint a robin at first, and now it takes two or right. not. <laughs> right, exactly. And then I can also keep track of colors because if I ever have to go touch up something like in a school, I've written down on the side, oh, yeah, this the shadow for this, I use this color and this color mixed together. So that when I come back, I don't have to – like now I could probably figure it out because I can see color really well, but there are some cases where it's like, Whoa, which colors did I use? So that helps too, just a reference to go back. In yeah. the future. I had a student just ask me this, I'd say two days ago. So they asked if I have like a color log of all the colors that I use on the job. And I'm like, you know, mm. no, I don't. So that would be <laughs> really great. So I love that you're yeah. doing this. Yeah. Also, um, 
I know that there's someone out there that's going to be listening to this who has your same personality. And I'm so glad we're talking about it because this could really help them. So if this is, oh, yeah. if this is you out there and you're listening, you're like, I am just <laughs> like that, but I don't want to do all the little things. Maybe you should do all the little things because it helps a ton. It <laughs> does. Your, your precision. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> I will never it's... do it, but I <laughs> whatever works for you and whatever works for everybody is great. I mean, everyone is their own individual too. So it's, I, 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 at this point too, I love to be able to help other artists and figure out, you know, let them know what has worked for me and it may work for them or may not, but to just to even think about, well, maybe I should consider trying that. Cause that's how I've learned by the, you know, there's a art, there's a group on Facebook for mural artists. I've learned so much from all. Oh, if you're not on it, you need to join it because they're so, it's amazing. Cindy Chin is the administrator of it. She started it however many years ago. And it's, it's just for mural artists. It's a great for any questions you have. All you, There's so many things on there. I always refer artists, go see that, go join that page because you'll learn stuff. Search it. And there are so many topics about how do you price? How, what kind of primer should I use for this? And again, you get many answers, but it's a great, great resource. For sure. So it's Cindy Chin? Well, you just have to look up Mural Artists. Mural Artists. That, that, that's what mm -hmm. it is. On Facebook. Mural Artists and, on Facebook. Okay. Yep. And I imagine that. Yeah, it's a group. It's a private group. Or, yeah, you'll have to ask the request to join, but I'm sure she'll let you in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> no, yeah, it's, I, I love that as a resource, and I, I spend most of my time on that in that group actually just seeing what mural artists are doing and how they're keeping busy and any question I could possibly have, I'd feel totally comfortable asking there. It's a very supportive group. You don't get nitpicky. You don't, you get, if you want criticism, you can ask for it. And it's a very, I just love that group. I can't say enough about it. So. <laughs> okay. I'm definitely going to join it as soon as we get off this call. Okay. Yeah. And that, that would be because I'm like, just like the wheels are spinning in my head. I'm like, that would be a great place to find guests for this podcast. Oh, and, absolutely. Yeah, I love talking to other muralists specifically because we do the same thing, you know, like mm -hmm. if I know the working conditions and the, and the music and like, I'm like, I can so relate. And it's so yeah. nice talking to someone who does the same type of thing who like works in the heat and like, mm -hmm. All and works with all kinds of clients yeah. <laughs> and all kinds of different things. Yeah, yeah, okay. Awesome. Okay, so where are you getting your clients? Where's Where are the jobs coming from mostly? Almost, almost all of them have been word of mouth and repeat business. Um, clients that I've painted for in the past want me to come back or they told a friend about me or their friends have seen their work and then they want something to um so networking has just been super huge. I I don't pay to advertise. I do share a lot on, I've been on Facebook for a long time. I'm very new to Instagram. I haven't spent any time on that. My husband is actually on Instagram quite a bit. So I'm learning from him, like how to do things, but I haven't had time to just sit down and research what the best way is to do my business on Instagram. And I'm hesitant to post very much until I know exactly the best way to do it. Um, so that I don't waste any I don't know. I just want to do it the right way. So that makes me hesitant to do very much. Like I haven't even added to my story ever. So like, hello, I need to start <laughs> doing that. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, so getting, we talked yesterday about, I have brochures. So getting brochures to many people, I get many clients say, I picked up your brochure at DNA Vintners and I'd love you to come paint my ceiling. And so it's, yeah, that's, that's been wonderful. Very few that came across my website online. Um, I did early on, I spent a lot of time finding all the free sites like Manta, Yelp, and all those places where they say, is this your business? Claim your business. And so I would, and I add a few photos just so if anyone happened to do a random search that they'd find me. So, yeah. Okay. So uh, were those profitable, like as compared to the brochures? Not necessarily, but I didn't spend anything other than time on them. So I, yeah, I didn't, I would never pay to do that because especially at this point, word of mouth. Um, and just anyone I talk to, I let them know I'm, I'm painting and I do artwork and, um, 
it's, you just never know who might want it. I mean, you have a target market for who you, you want to do, but my goal kind of is make sure my name is out there so that if and when someone wants a mural, they remember that, oh yeah, there's this mural artist near the cross that, that can help me. Um, I haven't had much luck with cold calling. There have been times where I randomly sent brochures to numerous people and nothing whatsoever. But as soon as their friend heard of me and their friend told them about me, that's when it, then they are willing to contact me and see. So even referrals online where someone throws, some business throws out, I'm looking for a mural artist who knows one. And they list like a hundred, a hundred different names come up. I don't, I don't have much luck with that, even if they contact me, because it wasn't them seeking me specifically, kind of. So at least that's how I, I don't know. I just don't have that much luck in that kind of advertising. So I just wait for them to come to me, and hopefully I stay busy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. As long as they know I'm out there and they see my stuff and keep updating my website with current um, work so they see that. Because that's another thing, too, if you keep posting certain things and you like I do, since my business is client-based and what the client wants, I have a wide variety of what I can paint. And so if someone sees, oh, you painted this fire engine, like a fire engine on a wall, and so another fire department sees that, oh, I didn't realize you could do that. We want to hire you now, too. Like, <laughs> so many questions. Can you paint this? I'm like, well, I never have, but yes. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know. It's so funny how people hire you to paint ex the exact thing you're painting. Like if I'm painting logos one week, I'll get like two other logo jobs. Or if I'm painting murals, mm -hmm. I'll get like one other mural job. I'm like, <laughs> okay. It's just. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. But you also have to give someone the idea first. You're like, hey, mm -hmm. look at the dog I painted. They're like, I have a dog. <laughs> yeah. Like people don't realize that you, you can, as an artist, a lot of times we're able to paint a lot of different things. Um, unless you're in a specific niche and you don't want to, and that's totally fine too. But then if you're in that niche, then everyone knows, Oh, I want this person because that's what she does or he does. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Have you tried out thumbtack.com yet? No, I have not. So I'm telling everybody about it because this is one okay. of my new found thing. So you just go to thumbtack.com and okay. it's basically where people go if they want to find like someone to make their cabinets or paint a mural like very like specialty kind of a thing okay. and that's how I got this job here in Iowa she found me on Thumbtack and there's not a mm. ton in Missouri per se but I've I know several artists that we've talked about this and I've shared this and they've got so many mural jobs from it so Thumb okay Thumb awesome Thumb Thumb. yeah and it's like, I'll do it's, that yeah, it'll take maybe like 20 minutes to like set up your profile and like add photos and all that, but it's definitely worth it. And you also, so you pay for leads. And so okay. you might spend like 15 bucks on a lead and you might not get it. But I would say overall, everybody that I've talked to, uh, eventually they'll, they'll get a really big job that like makes up for it. So, but yeah, oh, sure. That's, that's not very much. For, so that's good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Pass the information. Yeah. Um, so what is your past, your favorite past uh, painting or mural? Okay. Well, I've had that question before, and it's, it's hard to decide because I've painted so many things. Um, what I feel is each thing I'm painting for a client is super special to that client. So I, I can't say that I have a favorite because I just love that the clients love their painting so much and all of them feel like theirs is the best that I've ever done. Like they've told me this is your best mural. Oh. And so how could I, how could I not say, oh, well, I think this one is better. I mean, <laughs> so, or I like this one best. So I just kind of, I, I don't necessarily have a favorite. I have favorite things about each mural and the way people are excited to have these murals. That's what, that's what makes me happy. Um, I mean, it was, yeah, there are so many great things about every mural and so many clients. I've met so many wonderful people. I've never had a bad client. So just, I've been super blessed in that realm of things. It's, I love being, I love the jobs where I get to do a lot of, where they kind of let me use my creativity, where they give me a theme and then I get to design it. And I know someone told me they could tell in my artwork where I had more freedom to choose what I paint as opposed to someone who has specifically said, I want you to paint this exact thing. And I don't mind painting either. It's fun to, if someone, I've had clients that give me exactly what they want, like two, like a, 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 totally exact. And I don't mind painting that because it's fun to it's still trompe l'oeil or whatever. And, and they love it and they're so excited for it. So 
I don't know. It's, it's just a really, it makes you feel good to yeah. be able to do that. Uh, such a heartfelt answer. I love it. <laughs> so one last question, which is probably yeah. another heartfelt answer, but uh, so a lot of artists listening to this podcast, they're like trying to get into the art world and they're, they want to be a muralist or they want to be a canvas artist and all that. And they just don't know where to start. So where's a good starting point for anybody who's just stepping their toes in the art world and they want to get going or, and they want to be to where you are one day. What's, what's the first step? Um, it's going to take time for sure. And I had plenty of tears early on jobs where it wasn't going well or where I had a lot of breaks and I thought, well, no one even is hiring me. So you have to be confident in yourself. Know that it's going to take time. It, it's because word of mouth is huge and it takes a long time to build that up. And if you're in a newspaper article, don't automatically assume that all of a sudden you're going to get many jobs from it. Cause I've had so many, Oh, this mural is going to now make me famous. No, <laughs> that takes a, this doesn't happen. So, um, I just just keep persevering, I guess. Just keep going at it. Figure out um, when you're not, when you don't have jobs, keep painting so you can keep practicing, keep learning. I'm self-taught, and I'm always, always learning more and seeing how I did things not accurately. And there's always more to learn about perspective, always more to learn about colors. Just try to figure out where you're weaknesses are and keep learning on those and improving those and there's so many other artists out there willing to share their knowledge you don't even necessarily have to pay for it if you like you can get really cheap books off amazon and just study them um i'll, I'll say i love james gurney's book color and light that's a book that i go back to all the time and it, it's it carries so encompasses so many different parts of art that you can read through it as you're like, oh, I really don't know anything about this. I need to study more on this section. And like, that's just a great reference book that I, it's painting realism. So, um, which is what I like to paint. But I guess, yeah, just don't give up. I mean, make sure you, and it helps to have a really strong support group. My husband has been supportive since day one, since I did this. If if I was painting something and wasn't happy with how it turned out, he'd look at it and say, well, this part doesn't look right. I don't know why, but this part doesn't look right. So he was always my feedback, and I could say, oh, well, I'll work on that part, and then I could figure it out. But it always helps to have that second set of eyes early on when you're trying to get going because you've been painting it so long, you don't necessarily see what's wrong with it. Um, but having support around you really helps, and they can keep lifting you up when you feel really, like, why am I doing this? And I need a, a job because I'm not bringing in any money. Um, but just get your name out there as much as possible. Also um, do it. Anytime you meet people, hand them a card, hand them a brochure. This is what I do. Let your friends and family know, start with friends and family and still charge them something. <laughs> you have to set that precedent. <laughs> um, I, Family, they pay the same as what anyone else would pay. That's why I don't have many family members who have my murals in their houses. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's expensive. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I don't know, just don't give up, I guess. I mean, you can do it. I mean, I, need to, I love painting in schools so kids can see that there's a mural artist and it's like they ask me, are you getting paid for this? Or how much are you getting paid? And the teacher's like, don't ask for that. I'm like, I'm getting paid for what I, what my value is and for my time. And we discussed a budget. Like I tell kids, we discussed a budget and what they want to pay. And so they're paying me for this. This is my full-time job, which is even adults. So many people see me painting. They're like, is this volunteer work or what? I'm like, this is my full-time job. <laughs> like, this is what I do. And yes, I'm busy several months ahead. So if you want something, contact me now because it takes a while for me to get the sketches done and... <laughs> And I'm busy, so it, it took a while to get to this point, and I'm so glad it is. And I'm aware that at some point, the economy might collapse. I may be a really slow business again at that point, and then I'll have to figure out how to keep painting so that I can keep my mind fresh, keep my skills sharp. Yeah. So it definitely that. ebbs and flows. So. Yeah. Everything you just said was, I'm just like nodding my head. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I did that. And that too. Yep. Oh, go, go. good point. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I think all artists who have been doing this full time are in the same thing. They understand. And when you're beginning, it's tough because you're, you are new and it's hard to get your name out. You are going to want a cold call and 
go to restaurants and say, and, you know, offer maybe a free sketch here and there, say, this would look really cool on your wall. I mean, I've, I've seen a lot of artists do that too. And that works for them when they just really need to have a job and get some money and portfolio. So yeah. yeah. Start and get things going and don't be discouraged basically. Is yeah. Like, don't don't yeah. be discouraged because it's really hard, but it's so worth it. Yes. Yes. I mean, you get to set your hours and you get to create beautiful art that people love and enjoy and you get paid for it. <laughs> I still can't believe I get paid to do this. I mean, we're so lucky. <laughs> yeah. We, we really are so lucky. I think about that a lot too. Like, and yeah. even when I'm tired at the end of the day, I'm like, well, at least I'm not, you know, such and such job or, or any other job, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. I would get so nervous going, having to get up every day and know I'm going into an office and I don't have that feeling anymore at all. I'll maybe get nervous right before like a client visit. If it's like, where do I park and all those little logistics. But once I'm there, I'm not nervous at all because I know what I'm doing now and I'm confident in it. And um, yeah, your element. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in my element. Finally, it just took forty some years to get there, but but I'm there. I love it. Oh, okay. Well, I love starting the day off talking like this. This is just—it makes me in a good mood for the rest of the day. So That's good. Thank you so much for coming on and just talking about mural stuff and sharing all of your knowledge. And I just—I've so enjoyed getting to meet you and I well, stay in touch. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. It's been wonderful. And I, yeah, I definitely don't. I want artists to know they can do this for a living and and don't give up and just you know i don't know it's it's yeah. it's so worth it in the end so it is so. it's so worth it it's the best job ever so yes so thank you so much for having me this is my second ever live instagram <laughs> as of because yesterday was my first one so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so now i've got two under my belt so if this ever happens again i know what, how much to expect yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so. awesome. Well, you did great. I loved the okay. thorough answers that you gave, and everything's very heartfelt. And you just, it, it does not seem like it was your first or second. Yeah, you're like, okay. okay. <laughs> now I can relax and go about my day. Yeah. And it might rain today, so I don't have to paint today. So, oh, so oh, we'll I told you love rain days. You're like, oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And good luck to all the artists out there. I mean, I'm, I, I like asking, answering questions. If artists have questions for me, I don't mind asking, offering advice. So I'm available too. So, and it's wonderful what you're doing, helping all the artists. That's amazing. Thanks. Thanks. I yeah. Yeah. Likewise. Of course. <laughs> right, well, have a great day. I will talk to you. Thank, later. thank you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> This episode is sponsored by the Artist Academy Advanced Membership, a program for artists who want to up-level their art game by taking it from a hobby or a side hustle to a full-time six-figure art business. With weekly trainings that include step-by-step -step proven art business techniques, plus painting tutorials from yours truly <laughs> and other guest artists who are masters in their field, you will be well-equipped to learn and grow into the highly skilled and highly profitable artist you know you're meant to be. I've figured out what it takes to build my own six-figure art business, and now my heart is set on teaching aspiring artists like you to do the same. It's not hard, but it does require your time and dedication. So if you're up for the challenge, go to advancedmember.com. That's advancedmember.com to learn more. If you've enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast and leave a review. If you review our podcast and send a screenshot of that review to me on Instagram, I am at art by Andrea Earhart. I will then promote your art on my story and tag you as a little thank you for helping me grow this podcast and our Artist Academy community. I have a reach of over 50,000 on Instagram, so this is a little help me to help you incentive. up. Also, if you ever want your questions answered in real time by myself or featured guests, then just hop on over to facebook.com slash groups slash Artist Academy to check out the schedule every Tuesday to catch us on live. I'll see you next week.